Well, we were in a cemetery in Louisville a couple of weeks ago, just exploring. And one of our kids said to slow down because you know dad's gonna wanna take pictures of the flowers because every week I need at least one photo to send out with the prayer list. And so I always am looking for photos of flowers. And I also noticed there at Muhammad Ali's gravesite a little remembrance. And as we walked around the cemetery, and if you have walked around cemeteries, you remember that there are interesting phrases and gravestones and remembrances as we all wonder, how do we each want to be remembered? What do we stand for? What are we focused on in our lives? What messages do we want to encourage others to hold and remember? Well, if you're like us, you would have gotten lost in that big cemetery, eventually, obviously, finding your way out. But we spent a fair amount of time that weekend outside. It was very hot. Our daughter, our younger daughter, lives in an apartment now off campus as she moves toward her senior year. And so we were there and opening and closing and opening and closing the sliding glass door onto her patio. Bugs were coming in and out and at one point someone squished a bug and I reached over with a Kleenex and grabbed it to throw it away and I noticed that it was a firefly or a lightning bug. I don't know which one you use. It was the first time I had seen one for the summer. You know that joy maybe that still comes up in you when you see the first lightning bug or firefly for the season, but it was squished. And as I looked at it, none of us had known that it was a firefly when I got it, but it was still a glow. And I wondered how long it would continue to glow, but I quickly got rid of it and moved on to something else. But there's a message in there, right? And if you're paying attention, I know if I'm paying attention, there's always a message, always something to learn, always something to ponder, something simple, something grand, something you've learned or experienced before, or something brand new something that confirms something in you or something that really stops you in your tracks and makes you think. Sometimes I find some poetry, some of you send it to me, sometimes I find it on my own and there's a story and a sermon in there and I can use it in the bulletin or in the e-news and it speaks to me and reverberates. I came upon this gem that I want to share with you now a couple of days ago from John Rodell, and it seems to fit so well with this gospel lesson of Jesus sending the disciples out two by two with authority. And he sends them, telling them how to go, telling them what to do as they go. And I imagine they're very anxious as they go. And so I would imagine that Jesus could have written this piece that says, absorb as much of the light as you can whenever it falls on you, so that later, when you are lost in the midnight of your darkest despair, your tears will glow in the dark like fireflies, and we will come rescue you. I swear I will find you. I'm going to share that one more time. Absorb as much of the light as you can whenever it falls on you, So that later, when you are lost in the midnight of your darkest despair, your tears will glow in the dark like fireflies, and we will come rescue you. I swear I will find you. They need each other, those disciples who are being sent out, and we need each other, we belong to each other. Two by two they go because they need to stay in relationship. Jesus didn't want to send them alone. None of us is self-sufficient. We're a tapestry of interdependence. Maybe you saw that on the sign this week, celebrating Independence Day, but also celebrating our interdependence Two by two allows for checks and balances. Two by two allows for support and a workout partner. Last Sunday, we talked about bubble wrap and how we protect and care for each other. And they're sent out into the world, and Jesus tells them not to just go out and do whatever they want, but to focus on others. 
to build and repair and heal and sustain and find ways to be community, remembering one another and making sure that we find the lost and look for that light to continue to bear. Our first Sunday choir sang a song called Sing a New World into Being. And maybe you heard some of the images, maybe you felt some of those words and the intentionality. It's just like Jesus could have written that, like I think he could have written that poem about absorbing the light because he wants a new world to come into being. And he sends the disciples out so that they can affect change, so that they can turn the world upside down so that they can help certain things stop and dissipate and fade away, and so that certain other things can blossom, so that there will be more fruits of the Spirit, so that there will be more love and healing and justice. Well, Jesus was there in his hometown, and the people wondered about him. How is he able to say these wise things? How is he able to have authority? How is he able to echo and speak the words of God? I officiated at a wedding a couple of years ago. It was for a young person who grew up in this congregation and it was wonderful to hear him talking about his experience here with, with his betrothed. He talked about the things that he learned here and the ways in which he was shaped in his life. I was in awe that he was able to articulate that and it is something that we always hope and dream about and plan for that our children might res respect and deserve and experience things here so that they can be equipped to serve out in the world, so that they can be sent, their heads, their hearts, their hands, their ears, their mouths, so that they can be more available out in the world, so that they can do things perhaps like hiding a liberty bell under the floorboards of the church. We don't actually know exactly what our children experience as they grow, but we hope that they will grow into adults that understand what we say, what we believe about our core values. We don't quite know how deeply they might be ingrained in people, and so we have to keep at it. I like to ponder once in a while that our forebears that came to this church in the 1800s from Germany Coming as immigrants, I like to think that we hold on to that idea of being an immigrant and knowing how important it is to be ourselves, to find ways to assimilate, but also to find ways to stay ourselves and to stay unique. I always like to remember their journey of language and culture that they had to hang on to, and then they had to release a little bit of that and learn new languages and new ways of being and connecting with others from other cultures and other languages, our farmer forebears living off the earth, finding ways to respect it and care for it, and then the backlash that surely they experienced here in the church after World War II and learning about assuming and judging and forgiveness. I like to think that we carry all of that with us, whether or not we are German, whether or not we've always been in this church or not, but it's something in this space, something in the walls, something in the water but we have to keep at it because the things that are important to us the things that Jesus sent the disciples out to do the things that we talk about and sing about and pray about can kind of dissolve fade away if we don't stay vigilant if we don't stay focused Another piece that someone shared with me, I feel like Jesus could have written it, said, hate has talked so loudly for so long. Greed has talked so loudly for so long. Liars have talked so loudly for so long. Love has got to stop whispering. So we received last week a survey via email from our Open and Affirming Coalition in our United Church of Christ as Pride Month was wrapping up. And it was inviting us to assess our open and affirming identity and what we did to get to this place and what we are continuing to do and to always be fresh in the ways that we are inclusive and hospitable and warm and welcoming, to be intentional because it doesn't just keep happening. 
just because we feel like we've arrived in that place of hospitality and warmth and welcome, unless we keep at it, unless we keep telling the story, unless we keep finding ways to be fresh in it, unless we keep listening and learning and growing, it doesn't stay, it doesn't hold, it doesn't deepen. And so I like to imagine when Jesus sent out the disciples, he was telling them to go and to continue and to perpetuate that vision. As they met with people, as they listened to people, as they fed people, as they participated in miracles and healings, it was to gather more strength and more stamina and more sweetness and more presence and more willingness to risk and to maybe fall down but get back up again, to be day in and day out, season after season, relying on old ways and new ways to be the good news, to be that presence of God in the world, to be that hope, to be that light. Jesus told the disciples to go and tell people to repent. Repent meaning turn around, move in a different direction, maybe back toward God, maybe back toward each other, maybe so that side by side you are moving in the same direction as others and not working against each other. This past week our sign has said, uh, talked about interdependency, the tapestry that we are in, and it talked about you might need to toss some tea Again, a piece of our history as a denomination. And this week, later today or tomorrow, we'll have out on the sign, free people, free others. Free people, free others. And safe people shelter others. Safe people shelter others. It's what we feel called to be. If we experience these things in a setting such as this, then we will give that off and share that with others with the words that we use and the actions that we take. Please pray with us. Holy One, we are like those disciples in Jesus' hometown being sent out. But before we're sent out, we are equipped and we are reminded. We are given the gifts of your spirit. We are refreshed in that spirit. We are immersed in the stories of your love, the healing miracles and the parables and the ways that you talked about God and each other, the ways that you called us to be available, to feed each other, to be fed by one another, to learn and to grow and to laugh, to seek after the things that are of you. And so help us to put that love, to put those stories deep inside of us, so that they can sustain us, so that they can spill out of us to others, so that more will receive the good news. God, as we approach this communion table, this open table, we know that you are always reaching out to find ways to nurture us, to encourage us, to equip us, to anoint us, to send us, and to stay close to us, with us, woven together with us as we do your work. And so be gentle, be patient, be clear with us as we gather and as we scatter. Amen.